So hello everyone, this is Daily Developing here and today we're continuing recursion. So uh, now today we're going to be solving two more problems about recursion that will uh, master your skills. So here's the first problem. Given n friends, each one can remain single or can be paired up with some other friend. Each friend can be paired only once. Find out the total number of ways in which friends can be can remain single or can be paired up. So here is the example. Uh, let's just say there are three friends. They can pair, be paired up four ways. And um, here's how. You can pair them up, okay, one, two, and three. So all three are single. Or you can pair up, let's say, two and three, right? Or you can pair up one and two. Or you can pair up one and three, right? And, you know, and two is single. So these are the only four ways that you can pair up three different friends. And that's why, you know, when we say n equals 3, we have to output 4. So now, let's try to solve this problem. How would we write a program that does that for us? So let's just do uh, definition number and then give us number of friends. First thing that we have to do is um, we just got to think about it this way. So when we have three friends, right, let's just take it, um, all right, it's screaming at us, let's just pass for a second. Let me, let me explain how this works. So when we have a list of one, two, and three friends, what we have to think about, or actually let's even make it four. Uh, what we have to think about is always, uh, when, when it comes to recursion, always think about the last piece. In this case, it's four. What this means is four is either paired with someone or it's or he's not paired with anyone. What happens if four is not paired with anyone? Well, then just return, you know, number, right, of n minus one. Right, because whether four is there or four is not paired up doesn't change anything, right? So if four is not paired up, it equals to number n minus one. Now, if 4 is there and 4 is actually paired, paired up, well, first of all, what we should do is, okay, so 4 can be paired up with 3. So 4 can be paired up with n minus 1 uh, people, right? You, you can pair 4 up with himself. So it's just going to be n minus 1. All right, so let's just say in this case, right? Let's just say 4 is paired up with 1. Okay, so that leaves 2 and 3. How do we pair these 2 and 3 up? And the answer is actually much simpler. We just call recursion. So now we just multiply this by number of n minus 2. Right? So how do we pair this 2 up? We just call recursion again. Because what is this doing? Uh, what is this function doing? Okay, we just tell it number of friends we have. And it gives us... The number of ways you can pair it up so in this case we have two friends and we're interested in how many in how many ways we can pair those two friends up well we're just gonna do it multiplied by n uh you know minus two right because we have four numbers in total okay two are paired up so then it has it leaves us with n minus two right so this is this is literally like how we do it now we can't run this just yet because we have to actually set a term on where when the recursion will finish. So in this case, let's just do it this way. Let's say if n equals zero, well, just return zero. There's nothing to pair. There's nothing to do, right? Also, if n equals one, well, then you just return one because you know if it's one, it's it, it has to be single. It, you can't pair them up with anyone. There's only one possible way, and that's it's single. And then if n equals 2, then return 2. Because if we have 2, right? If we have 1 and 2. Well, the possible ways are either both of them are single, right? Or both of them are paired up. So that's why if n is 2, just return 2. And then for it'll this recursion will solve for everything else. 
so uh, let me just show you real quick let's uh, let's say n equals um, so okay in this case they're using n equals 3 all right and then print uh, number number n all right so the output is 4 right let's try to run this problem okay so it gave us 4 now how did it how does it actually work here is how you can do it we got one two and three right so uh there is again two possibilities three is paired up or three is not paired up let's just just put an x here like it's not paired up if it's not paired up then well what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do number right number and then we just put two here because, all right, this isn't paired up. We can just ignore it for now and put this here. Now, if it is paired up, what will happen? What are the all possible ways it can be paired up? So you can be paired up with n minus 1, right? So in this case, it's 2. It can be paired up with 2. And then that leaves 1 behind. And so number, we call it number of n minus 2. And in this case, all right, so we have that. Well, when the when number is 2, okay, it knows, all right, return 2. When number is 1, it knows it's 1. So it's 2 times 1 plus when number is 2, it returns 2, so plus 2. All right, so then it just equals, this whole thing equals to 4. That's how we returned. Now, let's just do one more example. Let's just say it's four. One, two, three, four. So we don't, the, the whole point of recursion is we don't have to solve for all of them. We just, again, we, all, we only have to solve for one last piece. So this is the beauty of recursion. We just solve for one last piece and then it just magically, and we throw it back in the recursion and then it just magically solves itself. So in this case, again, 4 is either part or not part. Uh, sorry, either paired or not paired. If it's not paired, then we just return number, right? Number 3. Because we can just pretend it's not there. We can just pretend 4 is not even there. And so return only the, the, these three. And, uh, you know, as we've seen before, number three, this equals to four, right? We, we've we already calculate, count it, calculated it. We know it's okay. This, this would return four. And now if four is part, now if four is actually included, what does that mean? So four can be paired up with. So there are three ways four can be paired up with, right? So n minus one ways, which is three ways. Four can be paired up with. Let's just say 4 is paired up with 1. 4 and 1 are together. That leaves 2 and 3. How many ways can 2 and 3 be paired up with? Well, we don't have to actually calculate it right here. We can just call recursion. Right? In this case, this is n minus 2. So we have 4 numbers. 4, uh, four minus 2 is 2. So we have two left, and this right here, we'll call it. Now, we know number two will return two. Now, we've calculated number three before. This thing returns four. So three times two plus four are all the possible ways we can make it single or pair it up. So in this case, it's 10. Let's see if that's what it returns. Let's make this thing n equal 4. Okay, there you go. It returned number 10. Okay, so now let's make another problem that is kind of similar to this. So, in this problem, we have uh, a set of non-negative integers and a value sum 
and we have to determine if there is a subset of the given set with sum equal to given sum. So if it doesn't make sense, here's an example. So let's just say we have uh, this whole set, right? This whole array of numbers. What we have to find is we have to find a subset or of which the sum equals 9. So in this case, the subset is 4 and 5, right? So 4 and 5. So you just have to find, you know, let's just say if sum is 5, okay? If we change sum to 5, the subset would be, all right, 3 and 2. Or just 5, right? You have multiple subsets. And, you know, if, if it has multiple subsets, you just have to... Uh, you just have to print one of them. You don't have to print all the subsets. Just print one. That's would be enough. Okay, so let's start. Uh, or actually, before I start, uh, try to pause the video and try to solve this problem. Uh, and if you can't, I'll give you a hint. Okay, so now, again, pause the video because now I'm giving you guys a hint. Uh, if you don't want to hear the hint, just pause it. Okay, so the hint is, uh, this might look like an overwhelming number of, well, over, uh, overwhelmingly big array with a lot of numbers. But again, think about it this way. Either the last number is part of the subset, or the last number is not part of the subset. That's the hint. So... Pause the video because now I'm going to explain the answer. All right, so here's the answer. So let's just create a uh, definition, right? Or just a function, I guess, count. So we need two things. We need a set and we need a sum. Okay, so real quick, we have this set and this sum. So what we have to think, uh, it's screaming at me all right pass here let's write this thing let's just say two is not part of the subset well if two is not part of the subset what that really equals is this right this is the same thing if two is not you know all right so now what do we do if two is not then return count so set set of numbers from zero to length of length of set minus one and the sum. Okay, so what did I do here? I pretty much copied this what we received as set and sum, but I just got rid of the last number. That's what I did. So in this case. Again, 2 is e either part of the subset or it's not. If 2 is not part of the subset, we can just get rid of it and see, will this work? Will this return true? And the answer is, if this is true, then yeah. Then this would also be, I mean, sorry. If the, this is true, then this whole thing will also be true, right? All right. But if this is false, so in other words, uh, again, so there are two possibilities, right? E either part of the subset or not part of the subset. If it is part of the subset, what does that really mean? Well, that really means this. Well, that means 2 is part. And then sum goes down to 7. Right? Because now we have that 2 as part of the subset. So now the sum is, well, minus 2 pretty much. And if 5 is there too... Right? All right, 2, 5. Oh, that would just bring it down to 2. This is pretty much what happens. So these are the two ways. Either it's just not there. If you think about it, either 2 is not part of the subset. So set is this thing, sum equals 9. Or 2 is part. And in which case, sum just goes down by 2. Okay, so what do we do here? We just add here or count, you know, set. Well, actually pretty much the same thing. But the sum is equal to minus, sum minus set of the last number. 
Okay. So this is pretty much what happens. If either one of this is true, if this is true, or so if if two is not part of the subset is true, then yeah, the general thing is true. Or if it's part of this, so we are pretty much trying both of them. Okay, now let's just uncomment them. Uh, obviously, this is not gonna work right now. We need to set when like when the recursion will end. So let's just do it this way. If num if sum equals zero, well that means that this is that's it. We reach then return true. Right? Because what that means is okay, let's just say we add here number seven, okay? It's seven. Sum would be zero. So what that means the subset already added up, right? A equal to sum. That's what it means. That's it. We found a subset that that equals nine or equals whatever sum we're looking for. So in that case, this is y, or oh, I'm sorry, this is seven. So in this case, if sum is zero, we have to return true. If uh, length of set is zero, then we return false, because that's it. You know, we, we kept trying to cut the set, right? We cut the last number, cut the last number. We went down to all the way to zero. If you know, we, sum is still not zero, then that's it, it's false. Okay, so now let's just get rid of this pass. Let's see if it works. So um, what we're gonna do is print uh, count. Okay, so this is the set and the sum is nine. It should work, let's run. All right, so there you go, it returned true. Now, if we change the sum from nine to 30, this should return false. So let's see, let's change it to sum to 30. All right, so now it gave us false. Right, so you see how this works? So think about recursion as like uh, a puzzle with a lot of pieces, right? But you only have to solve for one of them. You only have to solve for the last piece. And then once you solve for the last piece, you just throw it back in the recursion. And then all the other pieces are just magically solved using a recursion. So this is really what we did. In this one line, we just solved for one piece. And then, you know, it just threw it back in the recursion and that solved for the piece before that. And that one, and then again, throw it back in the recursion and it solved two pieces before the last one, and so on and so forth. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please put thumbs up and subscribe.